Yo, what's up everybody? Joshua Casper back at you with Plugin Boutique and welcome to another Scalar 2 tutorial. In this one, I'm gonna show you how to take these melodic bits inside of this MIDI clip and move them or transpose them depending on the chord that we're playing. This is actually the third video in a series that I've been making, just happenstance. Uh, we've been using the same MIDI. But the first video showed us how to identify and correct mistakes by using Scalar after we played a little bit something on our keyboard. So I was playing something along those lines and there was an incorrect note. And in that first video, we identified it and fixed it using Scalar. In the second video, we took the bass or lower notes inside of that sequence. You can see that right here. And we made them into these lush character driven chords, again, with the help of Scalar. Now in this one, as I said, we're gonna move or transpose the melodic bits here, depending on the chord that's being played. It's really, really cool and we're gonna dive into it right now. So before we use the detect feature to figure out our sequence or our chord progression, I remember it. So I'm gonna just hit scales here. We're gonna come into C minor. Instead of triads, we're gonna go 11th, and then we're just gonna make our progression. So we went C, A flat, G minor, F minor, C minor, A flat, G minor again, and then to E flat. So that's our sequence, and we wanna play that or transpose it with our project. So we're gonna right click, so that way it syncs to the DAW. We're gonna turn it on loop. And we also remember need to come into edit, select all, come into playback timings and turn it to two and come out of there. And now if I arm this and play my keyboard here, So I'm triggering those massive chords with just one key at a time. They're mapped to the white keys and that's just the way Scalar functions. But there's a really cool thing in the key locks feature up here at the top, which is chord notes and chord extensions. And what this will do, if I turn that on, and because I only have a two octave keyboard, it's a little bit weird. But if I play this chord here, it's gonna be the E flat major. You'll notice here on Scalar, these are all now one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the notes inside of that chord, okay? So now I can play those on all my white keys. Now, there are two quick switches here and these are to unmute the chord. So if we just wanna focus on melodic content, I can switch to this and you'll see it says chord mute. And now it won't play that chord when I'm pressing on my key here. You'll see that and you won't be able to hear anything but I can still use my right hand to play the melodic content. Okay, now that's all set up. And one other thing, we've got those quick switches right here to mute and unmute the chords. You can also do that in the edit menu down here uh, on chord mute. We can go to unmute it. And as I change that, you'll notice the quick selection tools change over there. So the question is, we've got this MIDI, right? And I, I'm not gonna play because I've only got the two octave keyboard, but I want to transpose those melodic bits using Scalar. So what I'm going to do is just hold down Control, click and drag that MIDI to duplicate it into Scalar, and let's see what happens now when I play this. I'm going to go ahead and mute it. Okay, so we're getting close. You can actually hear, and again, let's hot switch it to mute that chord and just listen to the melodic bits. So a few things are happening because we're using this particular MIDI clip. It's triggering these bass notes, but remember those are supposed to just be the chords. So we really don't need to do those or we can shorten them, but I'm just gonna delete them because I want my chords to really be there. And I just want this melodic bit to be like an accompaniment to those chords. And now if I play it, you'll notice that we're not hitting all the notes. And that's because if you look here, this note, D sharp four, is a black key. And remember, because we have the chord lock on and it's only gonna use the white keys, it won't use that. So we need to highlight those all. We can do that with our lasso tool or in Ableton Live, a quick way to highlight everything on something. It's just to click the note and you'll see that everything is highlighted. And then I'm just gonna hit the up space or the up arrow on my keyboard. And now those are on white keys. And if I play them now, Boom, all the notes are being triggered. 
and they're being transposed along depending on the chord that's being played down here in this sequence. Absolutely phenomenal. So let's go ahead and inside of Ableton Live, Control Shift T to add a new MIDI clip or MIDI channel rather. I'm gonna take the MIDI from Scalar 2 after MIDI to, uh, after Scalar. So Scalar on both menus, set it to in, um, arm that channel to record and just go ahead and record that sequence. and boom goes the dynamite. So there we go. Now we've got this melodic content that follows the chord that's being played, and it's a little more dynamic than just having the same three notes repeat over and over again. And perhaps we can use that for our hook, our bridge, whatever we wanna do, we now have that content available to us. It's just one more cool thing that Scatter can do to help you make better musical content. I love it, wanted to share it with you. Let me know in the comments if you loved it too. And uh, if there's anything else you want to know about Scalar, as usual, I'm Joshua Casper. Links to everything in the video description. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next video.